Well, hey there, fellow Akadoos. Uh, welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Q-Basic Asylum, where, as always, I am your guide and chief nut job in these here parts, and you, I'm quite certain, are sick of hearing it. All right, well, so here we are, and uh, this is episode 21, I guess. Yeah, 21, right, because last 20, so this is 21. And as you can see by the title up there somewhere, this to be Q-Basic uh, Digital Audio to the sequel. Ooh, the sequel. Uh, so yeah, as you probably guess, we're talking about digital audio again. So a little bit more about how to use digital audio in your programs. Um, yeah, it, I just I looked at the code that I had. It's a little, little clunky, a little awkward, so I refined it just a bit, and I'll show what I've done there. Uh, but also, we'll, we'll talk a bit about libraries. Uh, you ever been to the library? Well, yeah, libraries. And uh, always had kind of a love-hate relationship with them. Uh, we'll talk about it later, but uh, here we go. Let's take a look at QBA 21 here. Here we go. Right, right over here. All right, so what's this nonsense we got up on screen here? Well, it uh, looks here. We got the, this is QBA 21.base, uh, alias Squonky Pong. I call it that because it squawks at you. Uh, by Dr. Doodle in Copyleft 2023, as usual. Uh, so, well, let's run this piglet and we'll see what happens. Here we go. Boop. Now, uh, those of you who caught my episode 10, uh, Mouse in the House, uh, hopefully you'll recognize, or, or this should seem familiar, as, as Pong 4. Well, basically it is just Pong 4, but I added in some sound, so let's see what happens here. Here we go, click the mouse to go, and... Yeah! Yeah! We returned the ball! Dude, you totally suck! Oh, man, that sucks! Here we go. Yeah! Yeah! Dude, you totally suck! Ah! Dude, you totally suck. Game over, man. Well, I guess game's over, so you want to play again? Far out, dude. Far out. All right, so we'll try this again, and... Yeah! Yeah! Dude, you totally suck. Well, as you notice... Dude, you totally suck. Of course, we're here in, uh... We totally suck. Yeah! Dude, you totally suck. Game over, man. And this time, we'll select no. Nah, dude, not cool. There you have it. That's about all it is. It's just a, it's a simple pong game, uh, but with sound, as you've heard. So let's just do this. Well, I'll pull off this trick. Well, we'll take a look here now. See, uh, you probably let's see view subs. You probably will recognize the mouse sub. Of course, that's the sub that uh, allows a sub procedure that allows us to use the mouse. But here we've got. If you remember in radio, we had PCM dot sub. That's the sub procedure for using the pulse code modulation, the sound card. Well, here I split this up into two separate uh, routines. Instead of having one routine that can uh, record and play, I've got just play way. Because if you're playing a game like this, if I distribute this out to several billion people, then uh, they're just going to want to play the game. They don't need record sound. So I just split the PCM sub into two sub play wave, which you see here, and of another I call record wave, of course. And so we'll cancel this here. Now let's take a look at this pig and see how it works. As usual, excuse me, I'm boring myself here, but uh, we start out with def int a through z. And we see that pretty much every time just to make the variables integer by default. SF for now, if you notice, declare sub play wave here. Now that's wave with a uh, dollar sign, so it's a uh, string variable instead of uh, integer. Now, of course, declare sub mouse funk, we've seen that many times. Common shared paddle and ball. Uh, this line here allows the paddle and the ball array to be shared from one subroutine to the next, otherwise it wouldn't be able to see it, but that's just needed. If you put, take that out, it just won't work. Now, look here, we got path, there's another string variable, and it's C code QBasic QBA21. Now that's the directory or the a folder that I have the, the sound files in, and the code, of course, the sound files, the code, all that, are in this directory. And so I put, I set this variable here equal to that directory. Now we change directory path. I could just as easily have said change directory here, but just to make it a little more clear what's happening, we're setting our path like we did in radio at a C code QBasic QBA21. And of course, you'll need to change this to whatever uh, folder or directory you keep your code in, wherever you're keeping your audio files and everything else. Now we change directory to path, which of course is this directory, and it would, there it can find the, the sound files that it needs. So we randomize timer, and that's just, well, as it says, it randomizes the timer so that when we start the, the game after a pause, we, is the ball going to go up, down, left, or right? We don't know because it's random. 
this is a, a line label called new game this is at the end of the game if we want to start again boom we start here new game lives are set to three score is zero x320 that's in the middle of the screen and y400 in the middle of the screen again go sub do screen so let's take a look at our do uh, ghost <laughs> let's take a look at our do screen subroutine and here it is right here basically this is where we redim paddle and ball these are the arrays we said saw that we uh, shared common earlier uh, now these hold the images for the paddle and for the ball <laughs> big surprise right we clear our screen set to screen 12 that's a graphics mode that's uh, 640 by 480 pixels and with 16 different colors now a circle and paint, circle and paint, these all just draw the, the paddle and the ball and everything else. So you get Now here we get paddle, that's where we get the image of the paddle and put it into the paddle, paddle array. Put paddle to clear it out, uh, paint, ball, you've seen all this sort of stuff before. We're just building our images, saving into arrays, and we here we locate and print lives and score, all that stuff. It's basically just doing the screen, hence the name of the routine do a screen so back up here now we've, we've done the screen and restart that is if we lose a ball game's not over we just lost a ball we start back up here and then go again until we lose the ball again once we uh, lose all three lives well we'll see that later so we go sub pause this pause is where let's see run this here okay here's pause click the mouse when ready basically it just it halts the game so you can move the paddle where you want it to be and whenever you're ready click the mouse and there you go dude you totally suck well we already knew that but anyway there's that yeah all right after the pause subroutine here uh, we set our our ball x and y position to just random locations uh it's random 300 integer random 300 or integer random 100 so somewhere on the screen it's going to set the ball we don't know where it's going to start so we set bh the, the horizontal direction to one that's to the right bv the vertical direction is one which is down now if we look here z equals integer random times two and if z is equals zero then bh equals negative one what is this? Well, basically, we're, we're kind of flipping a coin, really, because we've got the random number generator times two, so that'll give us a number between zero to uh, 199999, and we integer, which chops off the, 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 the fractional part, so it's either zero or one, effectively. Essentially, we're just flipping a coin. We're either going to get a zero or a one. Now, if it's zero, then we set the horizontal direction to negative one, back to the left. And if it's one, then we just leave it at one to the right. And again, we're so same thing here. We're pretty much just flipping a coin. If it turns out to be zero, then B V equals negative one. We're going to go up. That's the vertical direction. But otherwise, if that's one or more, then it's B V stays one. Again, we're just kind of flipping a coin here. It's going to be zero or one because we do chop off the integer. It's either zero less than one or more than one, zero or one. Okay, hopefully you understood that, but it just randomizes the direction of the ball, where it starts, which way it goes. All right, now we're ready to start our main program loop. You see we got do and loop, so we'll just keep looping until we miss the ball too many times, and we'll see what happens then. So we start out, if h is less than x and x is greater than 3, then x equals x minus 2. What's happening here? Well, x is the horizontal position of the paddle. And if it, h is less than x, meaning the mouse is to the left of x, and x is le greater than 3, it's not already at the side, then x equals x minus 2. So if the, the horizontal mouse position is to the left of the paddle, then the paddle moves. It goes negative by 2, two pixels. If x h is greater than x and x is less than 552, so it hasn't hit this end, then x equals x plus 2. Just the opposite. If H, the mouse, is greater than where the paddle is, then the paddle moves over to chase it, moves over by two until it, it's equal. So this is what keeps the, the paddle change, chasing the mouse around the screen. Even though we can't see the mouse, we're calling mouse three to read where it is, and the paddle chases it, essentially. Now, if BX is less than three, or BX is greater than 613, meaning the ball X position is less than three, or greater than 613, well then we've hit a side. So BH equals BH times negative one, a horizontal a direction changes, goes the opposite direction, and sound 441. So just beep, 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 beep. 
that's all that is. Now, if by, the vertical uh, position, excuse me, is less than 3, then BV equals 1, sound 440. And what this is, if it's less than 3, if it's going up and less than 3, well, then we've hit the top, so we change direction back down, and sound 440. Beep, beep, beep. So basically, just beeping around the screen. None of this really matters until if BY, the, the per vertical position, is greater than 370. Now we have to check. Well, it's down here. Are, have we hit the ball? Is the paddle in the right place? So, if BY is greater than 375 and absolute BX minus X30 is less than 50, in other words, if the difference between the ball position and the paddle position is less than 50, then the paddle's in the right location. So, BV equals negative 1. We set the, the ball back up vertical again. We go sub hit. And we'll take a look at hit in just a moment. But, if BY is greater than 376, meaning this was not true, the paddle was not in the right location, we go sub miss. So if it gets great, if it goes farther than 376 pixels down, the only reason it could do that is because the paddle was not where it should be, so we missed it, now we go sub miss. Now, BX equals BX plus BH, so the position equals the same plus the, the ver uh, direction, BY equals BY plus BV. We just calculate the new direction position for the, the, the ball. We put the ball P-set, we put the pedal P-set, and we loop. In other words, we're, we're testing if the, the mouse is to the left of the paddle, if it's to the right of the paddle, we move the paddle as necessary to chase the mouse. And if the ball happens to hit the left or the right side, hits the top, then beep, beep, we just change direction. If BY, or the, the vertical position of the ball, is greater than 375, now we need to test. Is the, the difference between the ball position and the paddle position, is it less than 50 pixels? So the ball's here, the paddle's somewhere, if that's less than 50 pixels away, then we're good. We've hit the ball, and BV equals negative 1, so the vertical direction goes back up. We go sub-hit. Let's see what hit looks like. Go sub-hit. Okay, hit. So hit, we play wave, yeah. Now, as you notice, we hit the ball and said, yeah! Score equals score plus 10. We've scored 10 points. Locate, print, score, and then return. Simple enough. It just basically plays the wave, the, the, the yeah sound. Uh, score gets score plus 10. We locate and print our score and return. So, boom. Now, again, if, we've, if the ball is greater than 376, that means we did not hit the ball. The paddle was not in the right location, so we go sub miss. Well, what's miss look like? This looks pretty similar. We play wave. You suck that wave. We put BX, BY ball, and this just puts it to clear it out, to clear it, erase it, basically. Line, lives equals negative, lives ne uh, negative one, locate, print lives, and if, if lives equals zero, then we go sub game over. If not, we just go back to restart, which is back up to the top. Right here, we pause, wait till the, the player Picks the ball, the mouse, and we do the whole thing all over again. So, if, let's see, where are we now? <laughs> this is a little confusing. Yes, now let's say lives equals zero, then we go sub game over. All right, here's the game over sub. And, ugh, this is getting a little little complicated, but stay, stay with me here. Lines, we just, uh, okay, this is where, I'll, I'll show you what this does here. Dude, you totally suck. Game, game over, man. man. Now, we've lost all our lives, and the program is called the Game Over Subroutine, and which you can see, it just draws the box here, play again, yes or no. Now, it, it's checking the mouse as we move it. Is it less than, I forget, is it like 300, whatever. But if it's less than a certain pixel, that's yes. If more so, than no. So let's click yes. Far out, dude. And we play again. Now let's lose. Dude, you totally suck. Game Over, man. However, if we're greater than that threshold, we click no. Nah, dude, not cool. And game's over. So here we are, game over. We draw the lines. These are the lines you saw around. Play again, yes, no, mouse one to turn the mouse cursor on so we can see what's happening. With play wave, game over, man. Uh, do mouse three loop while b equals zero. Do mouse three loop until b equals zero. What does that mean? Well. It's just looping until you press the, the button, and then it keeps waiting until you release the button. This way we know if we pushed it, 
once, we've released it once. Now, if H was less than 286, then turn off the mouse, play way far out, dude. In other words, if it was less than 286 pixels over here, we're, we want to play again. So we play at far out, dude. And we go to new game up at the top. And if, now, if play, uh, yeah, if, if H was greater than 286, then play wave, not cool. For delay, one to a thousand, next delay, mouse two, clear screen, system, and return. In other words, it, we're asking, do you want to play again? And if the, the pet mouse cursor happens to be less than 286, that means yes. So we play far out wave, we go back to new game, start a new game. But if if this is not true, if that's greater than 286, then we play wave. Not cool, dude. For delay, one to a thousand next delay. Just to delay a second. Mouse two to turn the mouse cursor off. Clear the screen and system. That ends the program. Now we hit our pause subroutine. And as you, you saw that, that just it prints to click the mouse when ready and allows us to move the paddle, get it where we want it, until we click the button and then it starts up again. So we go line, we print that's the box behind this message here, locate and print, click the mouse when ready, do loop until B is greater than zero. In other words, until you press a button, it's just looping, looping, reading the mouse position. And if X is greater than two and H is less than X, then just like before, it the, the paddle is, is chasing the, the mouse mouse cursor so that while we're waiting to press the button we can move the mouse and the paddle tracks the mouse and once we get the paddle where we want it now we press the button and line that the box fill that's a, a black box that clears out the message click the mouse when ready and we re wait until we release release the button then we return and starts goes back to the game as before <laughs> wow I'm just real sleepy tonight but anyway that's basically how the 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 game works. The important thing we need to know, of course, we saw all this with Pong 4, but what's what's we're interested in here is PlayWave. Now, if we can see here, PlayWave, we just send it a file name, not cool.wave, or PlayWave far out dot wave. So how does PlayWave work? Well, view, subs, PlayWave, and boop, there we go. Now, as I, again, the thing I mentioned that this is really just PCM wave, except I removed the recording uh, recording code, if you will, and so it just plays plays waves instead of recording things. If we look up here, we got def int a through z again. Set the variables integer by default. Sub play wave uh, with the wave uh, parameter there. Of course, that's the the file name we put in there. You just put in, in play wave uh, you suck wave whatever. Now look here, it says this sub-procedure provides direct mode 8-bit monophonic playba playback services for Creative Labs Sound Blaster or compatible sound cards. It checks the DAW's environment for a variable called Blaster and then sets the base port address accordingly. If Blaster is not found, then the base port is set to 220 hex by default. The routine, routine automatically uh, sets up the necessary port assignments and resets the sound card each time it's called. On entry, the speaker is turned on and audio data is read from a binary file opened as number one. On exit, the speaker is turned off to avoid conflicts with any other programs that provide support for compatible sound cards. The procedure requires one parameter, as I mentioned, waves, uh, which identifies the wave file to be played. So, here we go. We set up ports and, res and reset the sound card. Uh, essentially, we, uh, the sound card requires a base port number. Uh, now, for example, the uh, base port typically is 220, but it could be something else. Uh, maybe you've got a printer set on hex 220, so you need to put the, the base port on 222, 224, whatever. What we do is we look at with base port equals val uh, hex plus mid environment blaster 23. What is this nonsense? Well, as again, in episode 10, we're looking for an environment variable called blaster we look for the second uh, second character and three of them so it should say that uh, yeah a for address and then 220 or a 240 a whatever we set that to the base port now if base port is equal zero then base port equals a hex 220 in other words if it didn't find this very environment variable then it just sets it to 220 by default. So if it let's let's say it did find blaster, it was 222. Then we just set the base port to 222, and the reset port is base port plus six, so 222 plus six, and etc. Normally it's 220, and if anything is not found, then it just sets it by default to 220. 
So assuming it's 220, as my computer is, we set reset the reset port to the base port plus 6, so it would be 226 hex. Uh, the read port is base port plus 10, it'd be 236 hen, hex, excuse me, 236 hex, and the command port is base port plus 12, so 232 hex. Now, we've set up our ports that we need to use the, the sound card. Uh, we send out command here to the, the sound card, the reset port. We set a one, send a one, excuse me, for T equals one to 10, A equals input read port max T. What's that? Well, basically we're setting one, sending one out to the reset port. Now we read the it read port 10 times, just to delay it a little bit, it get to make sure that it is one in there. Now we output a reset port zero, we send a zero this time, uh, for T equals one to 10, and read input, read port, excuse me, uh, next 10, next T. So again, we send a one, read the imp, read port 10 times, we send a zero, we read the read port 10 times, that just resets the, the card. Now our bases are set, the card's reset, we're all set to go. <laughs> no pun intended. Scroll down here, what do we got? Let's see here. Uh, we dim sample as string times one. What is that? Well, this is a variable that's a string variable that we're calling sample and it's dimmed as string times one. Now times one means that's just one character, one byte. So it, it wouldn't read a whole word where we just one character at a time. Now we, we've set up our sample variable that's good, what we're going to send up, I'm sorry, read from the, the file into the sound card. And we out command HD uh, hex D1 to turn on the speaker. Open wave for binary is fine. Now if you remember up here we sent goes a sub play wave wave. Well that's the file name we want to open. So here we open wave again the, the file we want to open for binary is one. Speed equals 10. You may need to, to may raise that lower it depending on the speed of your, your particular system. In any case, now we do and loop until EOF1. That, if you haven't seen this before, that's end of file one. So essentially, we do and we loop, we do and we loop. Now we get one from file one. We get file one sample. Remember, we just dimmed, uh, where is it? Uh, dim sample as string times one. So that doesn't have a, the dollar sign, but because we dimmed it as string, we know the sample is a string variable. So, it's, in other words, it's getting or reading from file one, one character, one byte. Putting it, in a value called, putting it in a variable called sample. Now, we send out the command port, the command hex 10. That is the command to play the sound. So what we're doing is we're, we're sending this command saying, hey sound card, I'm going to send you a value. I want you to play that value. Now out, command port again, ASCII sample. We take the ASCII code number for the sample. So if the so sample happens to be uh, capital A, then it's 65, capital B is 66, any other character, uh, a number, a uh, uh, punctuation sign, whatever, it just takes the ASCII uh, code for that and sends it to the out command port. For delay is one to speed, next delay, that of course is just a delay, again, to regulate the speed, and you can modify that as needed. Uh, loop until end of file one. So basically, we, we start out, we get the very first byte in file one, pump that into the sample variable. Now we send a command, uh, eight, hex 10, to the sound card and say, look, I want you to play this next, this next uh, value that I send to you. Out command port again, ASCII sample, that's the very value it's going to play. We delay a bit, loop until end of file, and of course, loop, loop, loop until we get to the end of the file. After that, out command port, a uh, hex D3 that turns off the speaker, close the file, and then sub. Boom, there you have it. it the, the tough part really is just uh, setting up the ports, getting them all set up, re resetting the card itself. We dim the, the string variable called sample. That's the sample that we're going to read from the file into the sample variable. And the get command reads the file, file number one, sample. We send the command to, to play out this, this particular value. Then we send the value to it for delay equals one to speed and then loop until end of file. Once we're done playing the file, we out command HD3, that's uh, turn off the speaker, close the file, and done. There you have it. That's about all the code for, for this, this particular program. And of course, now, it, we, I didn't include the record wave procedure but you'll see that later and then uh, essentially it's the same idea you just call instead of calling play wave you you send you'd call 
record wave and then the, the file name that you want to record. It then opens a new file, stuffs the data into it, closes it, you're good to go. So there's that for the code. Uh, now hold on a second, we'll uh, talk about libraries. One second, hang on. All right, well, as I'm sure I mentioned earlier, uh, sort of a love-hate uh, love -hate relationship with libraries. What do I mean by that? Well, they can be very useful, of course, uh, but they can also be kind of a crutch. You can get too dependent on them. So let's look at some of the pros of a library to begin with. we got functionality. What is that? Well, it, that's, it's functional. It, libraries can be used to do lots of things. For example, we could have a library to use the mouse, it, and to use the sound card, the printer, scanner, whatever. You may not know the particular code to to interact with those particular devices, but if you can get a library to do that, you just pop, pop the library in there, you're good to go. Use it as more or less like a black box, but so they're functional. They can give you more, more functionality. They're reusable. <laughs> That's pretty self-evident. You, you just keep a, a bunch of libraries somewhere in a hard drive when you need to use the mouse, what have you. you pop, pop in the, the relevant library, you're good to go. And they're modular as well. What do I need, mean by modularity? It's, they're sort of separate uh, part of the program. Let's say, for instance, you've got a library that allows you to access a printer. Uh, but now there's a new version of the printer, a new new software, new driver, uh, and the language that the printers use. I think it's ProScript, I believe, that a lot of printers use, and maybe that's been updated. So you just update the library. You don't have to mess with the rest of your program. You update your library or get an updated library and just pop that into the code as needed. You're good to go. So it's kind of modular. It keeps that part sec uh, separate. You don't have to worry about the rest of the code. Just up that, update that part of the code and you're good to go. What are cons? Well, first we got obscurity. As I mentioned, there's sort of a, a black box. Now, what I like about a library in QBasic is all of your source, source codes right there. You can read everything that's written there. So there's no mystery. What, what's this thing doing? You may not understand what this particular uh, statement or function does, but you can see that it's there. You can see it's doing something, what it's trying to do. So now, if you have a library, for example, uh, Microsoft C, uh, Visual Basic, really any of the, uh, oh, what's another big one? Um, Java's a big one that uses uh, libraries. They're all pre-compiled chunks of code. You just pop them in your program, and there are certain parameters you send to it, certain parameters you pull back, and you're good to go, which is great as long as it's it works with your system. But you don't know what it's doing. It's just something that does something. Here, again, in QBasic, you can read everything in, in there, so that's not an issue. Uh, if dependency, uh, as I mentioned, libraries can be a crutch. Uh, for example, C language again. Without the, the graphics, the standard in, in out libraries, um, basic header files and such, essentially with, with no libraries, all that C can do is print characters to a screen, it, numbers, characters, what have you. Yeah, I can do math, but you, you won't have any graphics, won't have any sound, you, you won't be able to print anything. All C can do without libraries is print stuff to the screen. How useful is that? Fortunately, there are thousands of libraries created for C, but you need to look, well, I need to, maybe I need to use a scanner in my C program. Now I've got to search online and find, oh, there's a scanner library. I'll, I hope it's the right one. It's compatible. So they can be a dependency issue. And then there's incompatibility, which should be self-evident. If you find a library that's designed for maybe Apple computers or, or I don't know, uh, what's the other, Sun computers, um, uh, Linux, that sort of thing. So, yes, libraries can be, can be helpful, can be useful, but they can be a hindrance as well. That's why I like to create my own libraries. And if, in fact, if you happen to see my episode 12, uh, what was it, uh, Warning, Graphics Language, I created my own graphics library. And in that, I have a set of functions that I can call whenever I need them. Now, if we look on our hard drive here, I'll show you in just a moment, we have a bunch of subroutines that we can create libraries out of. Hold on one second. Well, all right. Now, as we see here, we are in our, our the, the directory for our program here, C Code, QBasic, QB, uh, QBA21. I've done a directory of libraries in this particular uh, folder, this directory. And uh, you see I've got the one graphics LIB. That's the library that I, that I created uh, in episode 12. Let's just do this. Edit. Uh, 
graphics.lib. Take a look at this. Now here's the, the graphics library, and see we got subs, arc, box, liner, and pos. If you remember, or if you'd seen that one, the arc, well it draws arcs and circles things on the screen, box draws boxes, liner just does lines in different uh, different styles, pause, pretty uh, self-evident, and the tag, the, the tag sub, what that does, it prints text, but you can... Uh, you can rotate it left, you can rotate it right, uh, you can put it in specific locations on screen. These are all uh, uh, graphics uh, sub procedures that I've created, and I compiled them all into one file I call Graphics Lib or Graphics Library. So now with this, as you met, as I mentioned, you see we got our, our different subs, and as we scroll down here, this is the arc sub. Yep, there's the actual arc sub itself, and uh, here's the box sub. Here's the liner sub. Scroll down all this. So how did I do this? Well, exit here, exit. All right, the way I did this is I took some subs that I had uh, for that program and I compiled them into one text file because think about it here, the, the, all of these the drag drop sub, mouse sub, PCM sub, play wave sub, record wave, these are all just text files really. Uh, they're source code, yes, but they're just text. And you can copy one text file into another into another when you do that, all these particular sub procedures, one for the mouse, one for the PCM, the, the sound card, of course, record playback, and then record with drag drop is another one we haven't talked about yet. The idea is that these are all separate files. Now, you can import each of these into a, a program. Let's say we're doing a, your forte or your specialty is a Pong type game or Breakout, something like that with the paddle. Uh, so the mouse and the sound card, you want to use the sound card. These will all be useful for you. Now, if you if you remembered uh, with Radio from the last video, we used PCM to record and play uh, sound files, but we didn't use the mouse sub because we didn't use the mouse in the program. It would be pointless to put that in a new library. But if you want to do, say, call it, uh, I don't know, a, a Pong library, what we could do is I've created created a batch file called include. So we do include, and then the name of the, the procedure that you want to put into the library. So for example, we want our mouse sub in there because we'll be using the mouse. Dot sub and we enter, boom. And it says copy my library dot lib plus mouse sub my lib dot lib. So what it's doing, it's creating a new file called my lib dot lib and take the mouse sub stuffing it into my lib lib. So let's edit my lib L I oh, L I B, and we have our, have our frog my lib L I B with the sub mouse funk, and that's essentially all that's in the here right now. File exit that. All right, so we got our mouse subroutine in our library, and we want to we want to add well in this case play waves, so we'll be able to play waves, and so we type include include uh, play wave dot sub enter. And there we go. We copied my libs. Now, it, right now, my lib library has the mouse sub in here. We just copied play wave sub into my my lib lib and stuffed it back in my lib lib. So there's the files that are in there. Let's take a look. Edit my lib lib. And this is just the name I'm using. You can rename this thing whatever you want. So my lib lib. Now we have our mouse sub in here and if we scroll down see there's the play wave sub that's in here now with all the the uh, the declaration that declares it and all that and the code that you need so we'll exit here all right the R sub again now we want to add record wave just why not so uh include rec wave dot uh, su sub Enter, there it is. I just put record wave into my lib.lib. So, we'll edit here again. You get the idea. Uh, edit my lib lib. And we got our mouse function here. Mouse sub procedure, I should say. Come on, we have, um, where is it? My mouse, yep, play wave, and 
Now record wave is in here as well. Uh, you've seen that we added sub procedures to our, our library called mylib.lib. We can also add other libraries. Like for example, if you if you D I R uh, all library. Yeah, graphics lib as I mentioned earlier, that's the one with the arc and all the other things. So we type include graphics. Remember, these are just text files. It doesn't matter what they're named. I just name them this so that I know that, oh, that's a library, that's a separate sub-procedure, and enter, boom, my, my graphics library has been copied into mylib.lib. So one last time, edit uh, mylib.lib, and we'll scroll down here, they got, uh, of course, the mouse as before, uh, let's see here, mouse, there's play wave, we've got the record wave, but also uh what's this here there's the arc sub procedure the box sub procedure again from the graphics library there's the liner sub procedure uh what else the uh, pause and then finally tag sub procedure so this one library has all these sub procedures in it now you will need to rearrange it a bit because QBasic wants to, all the declarations, declare sub, declare whatever, up front. Or in fact, you can actually delete the, the declare, declarations altogether, and QBasic will pro provide them automatically first time you save your file. And as you use it, you'll see where you need to move this up to the top, move this up to the top. The idea being, uh, if you're doing... Again, if you're doing a like a breakout type of game, you know, that would break the bricks and all that, you want the mouse, you want sound, so you include those particular procedures. If you don't want to record wave files, you don't have to put the record wave function in. Uh, if there's, you don't, if maybe you're printing, you're doing a program to print stuff, well, then you would have a print sub or a library. But basically, that's the idea. What we're doing is exit here. You see here we had the graphics library, which that's the one I created before. Now this new one, mylibrary.lib, and that's just all the other functions, other sub-procedures you saw packed in there. If I want to, a slight, almost a suite of sub-procedures. So it, it, again, it's useful. It, it's some of the pros, of course, the functionality, uh, the reusability, all that. But it, it gets away from some of the cons. For example, it's not obscure. You can read everything in there. You know what's in there. Uh, you don't have to be dependent on it. Uh, and you know it's compatible with your code because you wrote this code. So anyway, yeah, that's the idea. Now, oh, one last thing. That's D-I-R all oh, bat. This is the batch file that I use to create my libraries. Then I'll... Uh, edit include dot bat. We'll see what we got here. It's just one line. It just says copy my library plus uh, percent sign one percent sign my lub library dot lib. Uh, what is this? That's called a replaceable parameter in DOS speak. Essentially, what it's saying is when you type include bat, it sends this this command to DOS. It says copy mylibrary.lib, that's the library where we're creating, plus whatever you happen to type after it. Include mouse sub, include pay, play wave, include record wave. Whatever you type after it gets stuffed into the library. That's how these more things get added and added, added. And then it saves it back to mylibrary.lib. Once you've got your library, you can rename it to whatever you want. You, I could rename it uh, Doodle LIB, I could rename it Joe LIB, Fred, whatever. Or, if you want, you edit this, this batch file right here, so it's, maybe your name is Joe. Copy Joe.lib plus print percent sign one percent sign Joe.lib. There you go. You've got a library with your name or Pong for a Pong type of game. A pe um, breakout, uh, Space shoot 'em up uh, what have you, Space Invaders, LIB. So there you have it. Uh, those are LIBs. That's about it for for that. So hang on a second. Exit. So there we have it. We've uh, we talked about the code for this particular program and, and how to use the sound card, of course. Uh, we've talked about libraries, uh, what they're good for, how to create them, how to use them. Uh, so I guess now all that's left is the superiors. And uh, we got a fun one this time. Uh, you're going to dig this guy. Hang on a second. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Hang on. Superior! Superior!
All right, here we are at the YouTube channel of Mr. Bobby Duke, uh, called Bobby Duke Arts, and as you may guess, well, he does arts. <laughs> this man is incredibly talented. In fact, I've been itching to show the, off this page for a while because he is just incredible. And the man, as talented as, as, as he is, he is just a lunatic in the best sense of the word. <laughs> You'll love every one of his videos. He's so funny. But look at here. Here's a pencil snake. He literally carves a snake, uh, sorry, carves a pencil into a snake. Yeah, it, it, you have to watch that one. I just saw it. It's amazing. Uh, literally on fire, he carves a, a fantasy knife from, from firewood. Uh, it turns that into that. Uh, a made with 3D pen. We've got this beautiful dragon skeleton. Look at that thing. This is cool. He's making crystals over here. It created... Uh, <laughs> uh, a Halloween pumpkin. Look at the eyes and everything else. Wow, I can't... <laughs> oh, there's another scary pumpkin. I can't t tell you how many cool things this guy has done. And, I mean, stone, he works with stone, wood, plastics, you name it. He he will... Uh, Minecraft in real life? That looks cool. I'll have to check that one out soon. But, oh, this one, he, he fixed his broken sculpture as his masterpiece. And that one, it, you really need to see that. It, it's just amazing. And he put uh, created that thing a couple years ago. And, and uh, it, you'll see what happens. Check that out. But um, here he, now here he's got these crystal wings he created. I mean, they're good, what, foot and a half long. And this sculpture here is wooden sculpture. He burns that and mounts these wings to that. He, Check them out. There's very cool stuff. Duke, Bobby Duke, he is just crazy. And all the amazing things he's done. This he carved from a pencil. A chain into a pencil. A pencil into a chain. What is this? This looks neat. I turned my arm into glowing resin sculpture. Uh, he's. <laughs> these are just some of his videos. He's got more loading here. Bobby Duke, he's... <laughs> <laughs> one of a kind, this guy. In fact, you may already uh, be fortunate enough to have seen his work. Cause it, oh, uh, there's uh, part of that, the sculpture there. You'll see that's a whole whole story behind it. But uh, he's got pets. Guys, he's got snakes. Bobby Duke, they <laughs> carve a scary pumpkin with the, the nose there. Again, it, it, He's just, he's really very inspirational, uh, you know, it, to see some of the things he does and how he, the things that can be done with wood, with stone, with eggs even. He carves an old ostrich egg. <laughs> you got to check out Bobby Duke Arts. You will, you will be just uh, entertained for hours. The man is incredibly talented and uh, just a load of fun. I can't say enough about how entertaining his channel is. Check it out. You will love it. And uh, hopefully it might inspire you to try making a scary pumpkin or who knows what else. Uh, check out Bobby Duke Arts. I guarantee you will love it. And um, so yeah, so that's <laughs> this crazy guy. That's all I have for now. Uh, back to the video and then we'll send you on your way. Hang on just a second. So I suppose that's about it, gang. We've we've covered our code libraries. We've talked about superiors and uh, hopefully I haven't bored you to death yet. Uh, so without making this any longer, I just let you go. Thank you so much for watching as always. Um, yeah, and uh, comments. If you have questions, I want to hear them so I can answer them. Uh, so leave your comments if you like. Uh, otherwise, just please enjoy the code and uh, have a great life. We'll see you in the next one. Hopefully, if you're not sick of me yet. Hasta la pizza, baby.